Hello, this is Angela with Parkos Permaculture. I can't find my selfie stick and I just got back from the gym and was not planning on making a video, but there is something that I need to address. So I did a video a while back about how a certain um, blogger or group of bloggers who are, I think, horticulture professors, um, made some pretty outlandish and outrageous claims about the use of cardboard in the garden. And they made those claims basically saying it's not safe to use corrugated cardboard in the garden based off of one small study from China about mixed paperboard poultry bedding. And by mixed paperboard, I mean from multiple sources, including food packaging that like freezer boxes or takeout containers that are known to be coated with PFASs. And based on that small study of paper um, of unknown origin and definitely not plain car corrugated cardboard paper, um, the garden professor made this really strong claim that it's not safe to use cardboard in the garden, a claim that is not backed up by the one small study that they cite. And I have made some really strong comments on social media about why I think it's really harmful to make claims that are not supported by the data. Clickbait junk science claims that get lots of views on your blog and get you a ton of attention and scare the crap out of your average gardener who does not have their, you know, pastime or their hobby being wading into the weeds of the scientific literature, right? Or maybe somebody who doesn't have scientific training whatsoever and doesn't really know how to read and unpack a, st a study, much less a blog post that is making claims based on the study without going and reading the source material themselves. So first of all, I will say I have already gotten flack because I have a lowly bachelor's degree, which is much to the shame of my whole family because I am the black sheep and the only one without a PhD or MD or masters and MDs and masters and PhDs. So I'm well aware that some folks look at me and say, Angela, you are, you know, someone with a bachelor's in biology and you should not be um, disagreeing with or critiquing someone who is an academic, who is a horticulture professor. And to that, I would say that's absolutely ridiculous. Anybody who has taken basic, hopefully high school level, but definitely college level biology classes should know how to read and understand a peer reviewed piece of research. My 15 year old knows how to do it. And that is not to shame anyone who doesn't and doesn't have training in that. But if you have a bachelor's in biology, you are qualified to read that blog post and say, you know what, I'm going to go back and read the initial study that these claims are based on and see that the claims are unfounded based on the current literature. So why am I so worked up about this? Why is this such a problem? Why have I vocally critiqued this particular person? And I'm not out for character assassination. I'm not out to um, start a war with this person because you know what? She likes to argue vigorously online and her fans rival Swifties in terms of their vigorous defense of her claims without bothering to really address the science behind them or the lack thereof. So as I said, I come from a family of very highly educated people and perhaps this gives me a little bit of an advantage because I view medical professionals, academics, PhDs, anyone with an advanced degree as simply a person, like my brother, you know, like they are not um, gurus. And I have a whole video on gurus and permaculture because I think that's what's happening here. When we view academics as somehow elevated above the rest of us, rather than someone with a very narrow range of specialty training that gives them expertise in, again, a very narrow range of some sort of, of area of academia. We risk having, we risk guru syndrome, right? We risk creating the Jordan Petersons and the Andrew Hubermans of the world when we elevate academics to some kind of elite status and put them on a pedestal. There are plenty of academics who are quacks. There are plenty of academics who post junk science. There are academics who get their literature, um, you know, rescinded, who have their claims proved to be unfounded, and including some medical studies recently that have been retracted because those studies were faked, they were unable to be reproduced, they, they were very poorly done. So for me, I'm here ranting today because there is real harm that is done when someone 
makes very bold, very confident claims that are not supported by the data. And lay people read those articles and are freaked the heck out. It is fear mongering. I have seen people saying you can't use plain corrugated cardboard in the garden. In fact, the thread today that was in a public Facebook group that I'm in was someone posting a meme about using plain corrugated cardboard boxes from Walmart and cutting them up and using them as sheet mulch in the garden. And people were like, oh my gosh, don't you know about all the bad chemicals in plain corrugated cardboard? And they were referencing this study or they were actually not even referencing the study, they were referencing the blog post by these professors. I think that that shows how, how big of an impact folks with a platform, folks in academia who have a platform, how big their influence can be on the lay population, on the general public, and how much harm can be done when you make these bold claims. It does real harm because you scare people out of using a free, abundant resource that is biodegradable and highly effective and not only helping colonize and encourage a healthy fungal microbiome in your soil, but also it's suppressing weeds. And because it is so good at suppressing weeds, you find that people don't have to use black landscape fabric, which is made out of plastic or other plastic barriers, and they don't have to use herbicides. So yes, it does real harm to make claims that are not supported by the data. And let me just be really clear, when an academic says, well, there are no published studies proving that this is safe. A responsible academic would not make that kind of claim, right? So yes, there has not been a lot of really diligent work into permaculture style gardening. And I have said repeatedly, in fact, I said recently on my video about fruit guilds, I wish there was more. The two studies that this academic references repeatedly are one that she did more than a decade ago that is very limited in its scope about oxygen transfer when you have cardboard as a mulch. And it was done in the very short term, not in the long term, looked at a very narrow range of impacts, right? And I will get into that study in a future video because I am dying to unpack it. The other study is that small study of mixed use paperboard poultry bedding. And those two studies do not, do not, support the claim that it is unsafe to use cardboard in the garden. And frankly, I'm deeply frustrated that someone with a large platform and a huge following would be making these claims for clicks on her blog post, what have you. I don't know. I don't know why she is so confidently making claims that are not supported by the data. And so what we do know is we do know the components in plain, uncoated, corrugated cardboard and we know what materials go into the inks and we know that all of those are biodegradable and actually are fine to use in the garden, right? And we do know that you should shy away from using coated cardboard that is often used in like pizza boxes or takeout boxes or anything that's really greasy, um, food packaging. You should refrain from using that in the garden because we do know that they are coated with PFASs. I think it's more of a concern that your food is contacting those, especially hot food. Um, but I haven't read any literature that shows the health risks to humans from, from using those kinds of, of packaging directly. Much more of a concern than putting it in the soil, I would say. So I realize I'm on a bit of a rant here, but I'm f deeply frustrated in gardening groups, seeing people repeatedly posting this junk science. And, you know, I've gone at it toe to toe with the garden professors online. And the discourse, I would say, is disingenuous and unhelpful um, and is extremely defensive and extremely like look down your nose at anybody who doesn't have a PhD and is not a tenured academic. And that's a big problem. We don't need guruification. We need to be able to trust academics and trust researchers to make claims that are supported by the data and make sure that they are constructing good studies. They are carrying out good science. They are making a good faith analysis of the data and drawing good, accurate conclusions from it. And then using those conclusions, using that data to want to create even more research so we can more deeply understand the subject matter, right? We can't stop at these two limited studies and make these very bold claims that freak gardeners out that make gardeners feel that a readily available, biodegradable, free resource that is highly effective at suppressing weeds and really good for your average gardener is somehow unsafe when it is not, right? So 
Thanks for listening to my rant today. I am excited to get into that study about oxygen transfer and cardboard more. And I wanna encourage you, if you don't have a training or background in science, um, that doesn't mean you can't learn how to read a scientific paper. In fact, maybe I should make a video on how to read a scientific paper. And also realize that when you say see somebody making a claim, even me, me making a claim here, I always link to the studies. Go read the studies. Don't take a blog post or a news article, especially not an article, you know, that's in popular media. Don't take those claims seriously because they often misrepresent what the study is about and they misrepresent the extent of the, the conclusions that can be drawn about that study. So rest assured, you don't need to be scared about using uncoated corrugated cardboard in your garden. It is highly effective as a weed barrier. It's free. It's something that this blog post should not scare you out of using. I think it would be, I cannot speak to the motivations of the person making these claims, but I can tell you that putting an academic up on a pedestal is really risky. And it's creating a situation, as my friend Mike said, I'll link to his stuff down below too, because Mike also loves to chase the data and not rely on clickbait blog posts. I'm not sure what their motivation is, but follow the science. We don't wanna put academics up as gods who the words out of their mouth are gospel truth. We want to hold them to the high standard of having data to back up what they say. Otherwise they become pseudoscience gurus. So thanks for watching today. I'm going to actually go on a hike with my family. We are going to the Hoyt Arboretum, which my next video is going to be about. I've been there a couple of times this week. Um, and I will have a video about that coming up soon. I love arboretums. I'm a big fan. Again, you don't have to be an academic to read a scientific paper and learn from it and gain benefit and improve your design from reading it. But don't trust what somebody says without verifying through the data, through the research, and make sure it is good quality peer-reviewed research and that the extent of the study actually backs up the claims that are being made, right? Let's not create Jordan Peterson's and Andrew Huberman's in permaculture, in gardening groups. Let's not do that. Let's make sure we stay curious. Yes. We are supporting and funding good science and we are using that science to tweak and improve our garden design, to become more effective, more ecological and more responsible gardeners, right? Let's, let's definitely do that. But let's make sure that we're following the science and we're not creating idols out of people who are in academia or anybody with a popular platform, be it YouTubers or bloggers or what have you. Let's go back to the science. Thanks for watching today. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'll share a bunch of stuff down below in the comments. I probably won't get this posted until tonight because I'm gonna go on that hike with my family. I hope you're staying well and safe. I hope you are enjoying mulching your garden this spring with plenty of cardboard and wood chips, and I will be back really soon. Thanks.